Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're going over our top 10 security settings for Windows Server 2025. Before we get started with today's video, if you guys are interested in purchasing Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, Windows 10, Windows 11, Microsoft Office, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, the first security setting that we're gonna put in place is enabling credential guard. The first thing we have to check is whether secure boot is enabled. We can do that by hitting our start key and typing MS info 32, which will pull up our system information. So we'll click into this. We can see that secure boot state in my case is unsupported. In my case, this is because of the virtual machine generation that I'm using inside of Hyper-V. I'm still gonna go through the tutorial, even though I can't actually do it on my virtual machine. So once we've checked that, we can enable via group policy. So we'll type Windows key and R. That's gonna get our run box open. Let's type gpedit.msc. Now I'll expand this. We're gonna to go to administrative templates. Next, let's go underneath system, just clicking the arrow. And we want to go to device guard. We're gonna see our setting here for turn on virtualization based security. So let's go ahead and double click into this. We want to set this to enabled and we want to make sure that secure boot and and dma protection are both selected from here we will hit apply now we can see that the state is enabled right here and then we will restart the server in order to make those changes take effect at any time we can check the status of whether this was successful we can do that simply by going to our command prompt we'll paste in the following command and we'll press enter so it's going to tell us if virtualization based security is enabled. And of course, we can see on my machine that it is not enabled. You'll want to see enabled here. The next thing that we're going to want to enable is BitLocker. We do have an entire tutorial on this, and we will put that on the screen now. From our control panel, we'll just go to system and security, BitLocker drive encryption. And here we can basically enable or disable our BitLocker and follow along with the wizards. Again, if you want to see a full video on BitLocker, check out the one that we linked above. The next thing that we're going to go over is disabling unused protocols. There is a particular protocol that is a larger vulnerability to attacks. So let's go ahead and open our PowerShell and we're going to enter the following command. Go ahead and paste that. All right. And we can see disable Windows optional feature online SMB1 protocol. No restart and let's press enter. One of the major protocols that increases your vulnerability for attacks, it's a major attack vector and that is SMBV1. We're gonna paste the following command here, disable Windows optional feature, and then here we can specify the protocol. We'll leave this command in the description for you to copy and paste, and we'll press enter. We can run the exact same command, but switching disable for enable, if we want to re-enable this protocol. Before we move on, let's just verify that this protocol is gone. We'll paste the following command and press enter. We can see that the state reads as disabled, and at this point, we can go ahead and restart the server. The next setting that we want to configure would be password complexity requirements. Let's open our run box. That's Windows key together with R. We're going to type in secpol, S-E-C-P-O-L dot M-S-C, and we'll press OK. Here we'll go to account policies and password policy. Some of the best practices here would be to have a maximum password age of a somewhat shorter duration, around a month. Minimum password length, the more that we increase that, the stronger our security. So we could adjust this to, for example, 14 characters. We also have the lockout policy and the lockout threshold, for example. And the lockout threshold, for example, we might want to make that five invalid logon attempts and lock them out for 15 minutes or something like that. Since I have this server promoted to domain controller, I'm unable to use local security policy. If that's the case for you as well, let's go back to the run box. We're gonna enter gpmc.msc. So you're gonna bring us to our group policy management, which is what we want. We'll go underneath our domain. We're gonna right click under default domain policy and let's click edit. So again, these settings are now going to affect all of the users that are under our domain. So I'll expand this so you guys can see a little easier. We'll go to computer configuration. Underneath that, we'll hit policies, windows settings, security settings. Next up is account policies. And then here we have our password and account lockout policy. So now if I want to specify something in here, for example, the account lockout threshold, I can double click that. We can see that my settings are now adjustable. So we'll set it to five lockout attempts. 
and I'll change the threshold here or the lockout duration and I'll roll with the suggested setting. So I'll press okay. And now that is configured. The next setting we're gonna suggest is attack surface reduction rules. Basically this blocks malware behavior via Windows Defender exploit guard. This is very easy to enable. Let's go into our PowerShell and from here, we'll paste the following command. Let's press enter. That was just one example of a rule that we can enable. We'll leave a link to the full list of rules below. Our next suggestion is to edit your firewall settings. So from the server manager, we can click tools and we'll go into Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security. Now the best security practice in this case would be to go to our inbound rules, select all of them with control A and disable the rules. From there, we would manually allow the ports that we need with our own custom rules. All right, let's move on to the next setting. For number seven, we're gonna talk about for number seven, we're going to enable advanced audit policy configuration. Let's open our runbox again, that's Windows key and R. We're gonna type gpedit.msc. So we get our group policy editor. This is the local group policy editor. Again, in my case, I'm domain controller. So I'll go back to the gpmc.msc. Both options are fine depending on your situation. Once we're here in group policy management under domain controllers, we'll see the default domain controllers policy. So I'm gonna to wanna to right click on this and click edit. From here, we'll go to policies under computer configuration. Let's go to Windows settings. From here, we'll click under security settings. What we're looking for is advanced audit policy configuration. It's here towards the bottom and we'll see audit policies below. So this is broken down into policies. We have logon policies and se several other policies. Now the easy thing to do would just be to enable everything. So we can see it's not configured. For example, the audit credential validation. I'll right click this, configure the following success and failure. We'll hit apply and we'll hit okay. Again, this will be up to you to choose which subcategory and audit events that you would like to enable, uh, but we can access all of those from here. Next up, let's go into our, uh, next up, let's go into our registry editor. So we'll open our run box, type in regedit. Once we're in here, we'll select the protocols folder and then right clicking on the protocols folder, we can do new key. Okay, and then that key, I've already done this as you can see, that key will be called TLS 1.3. Right click TLS 1.3, new key, and then it'll enter client and server like I've done here. Again, I'm deleting that because I've already done that. And then once you're in here, we simply have to right click and hit new DWORD 32-bit value and title this enabled. We can see one already exists, so let me delete that. But we simply enter enabled as a DWORD 32-bit value, right click, modify, and value data should be set to one. Do that for both the client and server folders that you've created and restart the server. Now the purpose of this one is for modern encryption only. This prevents downgrades and MITM attacks. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is open our runbox once again. Let's go to services.msc. And from here, what we're looking to do is to enable any of our unused services. For example, I'm not using my print spooler service. So I can simply right click on this and hit properties. We can see the service is running and I can stop the server. From there, we can go back into properties and then under our startup type, we can, we can change this from automatic to disabled. Hit apply and hit okay and that service is now disabled. Repeat the process for any unused services. All right guys, so for the last one here, let's open up our run box. And again, we'll type in gpedit.msc for a local server or in my case, I'll do gpmc.msc as we need to go back to our group policy management for our domain controller. And then default domain controllers policy. That's what we're looking for. So we'll right click and hit edit. From here, we'll go to computer configuration and policies. Here we'll go to Windows settings. Here we'll go underneath administrative templates and we're looking for Windows components. That's gonna drop down a bunch of different files here. We're looking for Windows updates. So I'll scroll down to Windows update. We'll click underneath that. We wanna click manage end user experience. We're gonna double click to configure automatic updates. I'm gonna change this from not configured to enabled and then auto download and schedule the install is the setting that I would like to use. And then scheduled install time. And I'm gonna set this on a schedule that's not going to interrupt my working hours. So I'll just do every Saturday scheduled in install time, set that to six and I'll hit apply and I'll hit okay. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything we went over, feel free to drop those in the comments below and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, 
Be sure to check out Indigo Software, we'll have those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to hear what those are. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support our channel. Thanks again for watching, we'll see you guys next time.